Hey everyone, welcome to the Connection Church online. My name is Bobby. I'm the family pastor here at the Connection Church and this is my great friend, Lauren. Hey everybody. How are you doing? We are so excited that you are with us today. Hey, if you haven't heard, we are meeting in our physical locations again and we're excited to share with you what that looks like. So take a moment, sit back and enjoy this. What's going on Connection Church? We are so excited that we are gathering again this week. Things are gonna look a little different though, but that's okay. Come with me and I'll show you what to expect. This experience is gonna be safe, secure, sanitized, and spacious. But more importantly, in TCC fashion, spectacular. Once you arrive to the front of the building, we will have a team in place ready to receive you and greet you and check you in. Which reminds me, if you haven't already reserved your spot online, do so right now because seating is limited and filling up fast. And we want to make sure that we save you and your family a seat in our service. Then our team will guide you into our building at a safe distance where you don't have to touch anything so that we keep you and your family safe. We want you to bring a mask from home, but if you don't have a mask, that is okay. Because here at the Connection Church, we have masks for anyone who needs one. That way we can keep everyone safe. Then we're gonna go in through our worship center doors. Once you get into our spacious worship center, you're gonna be greeted by a team who's gonna help you find your spot in a seat that's been sanitized both before and after every service. This way, you're sitting in a place that is not just safe, but sanitized. So we want you to go online and reserve your spot. This is going to help us uh, serve you and your family the best way possible. Now parents, this is a family friendly service which means that your kids have a part in the service so we need you to go online and download the connection kids coloring page bring that with some markers and some crayons that way they can participate in that part of the service with you here's another great idea bring a tablet and bring some headphones that way while you enjoy the message they can log on to connectionkidsonline.com and enjoy all the fun and excitement that we have for them over there so like I said, this weekend is gonna be safe, secure, spacious, sanitized, and spectacular. But maybe, just maybe, you're not quite ready to gather with us in our physical location. That is okay. We wanna encourage you to go over to tcclive.org where you can connect with us online there. But we cannot wait to meet with you again soon because nothing beats gathering together at God's house with each other. This weekend is going to be a little different, but it's going to be amazing, and we'll see you soon. If you are joining us from anywhere in Hayes County, we cannot wait to see you back at one of our two locations. But until then, we have an awesome online experience for you. We'd also like to take a minute to welcome our first-time guest. Here at the Connection Church, we call you our first-time guest, VIPs. VIPs, we want to connect with you and give you a free gift. It's a book by our lead pastor, Pastor Cole Phillips. So here's what we need you to do. I would love for you to text the word welcome to 512-359-3400 or check this out, Pastor Bobby. You can even just take out the camera on your phone and scan this QR code on the screen. That'll take you exactly where you need to go. Awesome. And wherever you're joining us from today, whether that's Facebook, YouTube, or tcclive.org, we want you to take a second and engage with us in our chat rooms. That's a great way to stay connected with us today. We have a bunch of people who are ready to pray with you and connect with you in whatever you may be going through this week. And also, help us share this message of yeah. good news around the world today by hitting that share button right now. That's right, and we also want to invite anyone with kids to check out ConnectionKidsOnline.com for a lesson, for games, and some awesome resources for your kids, so you can click there at any time. And it's Mother's Day! Yes! Yes! Moms, we want to say thank you for everything that you do for us. You're so special. We have a gift for you in the link below 
you can go ahead and just scan that QR code and it'll make available to you the free gift put together by our very own mom of the house, yes. Pastor Pam. That's right. So today we're going to start off with some amazing worship from Connection Worship. Then you're going to hear about how God is moving in really big ways through the Connection Church in our community and worldwide. So I'm excited about that. And finally, we're going to hear an awesome Mother's Day message from our two lead pastors, Pastor Cole and Pam Phillips. So I want to invite you to stay tuned in and stay connected.
has been lifted Graces waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Graces waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted
Jesus, have your way in me now. I open up my heart. take a moment to share with you the many ways that we, that's you, me, and the entire Connection Church family have made a difference during this time of crisis. As you know, this pandemic does not only affect us locally, but it is a global issue. But because of your generosity, we as a church have been able to sponsor five pastors in India. In fact, we are covering their entire salary to allow them to keep reaching those who are far from God. Think about that. Because of you and me, people who have never heard about the love of Jesus are hearing that in India right now. And I want you to think about the mission and vision of the Connection Church. That is to connect with God, connect with others, and connect others with God. And because of your generosity, we are able to be a part of that. And I want to invite you to do that today, to take that step of generosity to today. And there's so many ways that you can do that. You can visit our very own website, visionarygiving.com. You can give there. You can also give via text. You can text any dollar amount to 512-400-2735. If you wanna mail in a donation, you can do that by mailing it to PO Box 2225, Kyle, Texas 78640. Or you can give on our mobile app, TCC mobile app. It is free, safe, and secure. And if you've never taken that step of generosity, what are you waiting for? You can make a big difference in so many people's lives. And I just know that God is going to bless your life as well. So let's take a moment to pray together. God, I want to thank you so much for our time together and how you are moving in a big way here and around the world. And I thank you that you invite us to be a part of that as well through our generosity. And I pray that what is given today 
will make an impact nationwide. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord. the Lord is my shepherd. Is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He, he restores, restores my soul. soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no, no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell. And I shall dwell. In the, the house of the Lord forever. forever. All right, I am Cole Phillips. This is my beautiful wife, Pam, and I'm so excited today that we get to share with you together on this Mother's Day. Yes, we're so excited to be here with you, um, and especially those of you who, um, this is your first time with us. Um, we hope that you will find a forever home with us now. Yes, and uh, I have a question for you as we get started. The question is, when was the last time you went to a family reunion? Do you, do you enjoy family reunions? Um, I wonder what comes to your mind when you think about a family reunion. What I think about is traveling a long distance over the river and through the woods to some remote place. I, I maybe picture uh, a casserole that I'm eating and I'm wondering, is this gonna make me sick? <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, I think about all the stories that maybe grandma and grandpa told about the good old days or maybe your experiences with that, you know, one weird uncle that, you know, we all have that one weird yes, uncle. Yes, yeah. And so as we think about a family reunion, you know, we actually got to go on a little bit of a family reunion uh, right before all the shelter in place stuff happened. Actually the week right before we went to New Orleans of all places yeah. and went down to the French Quarter a couple times. Well, one of those days we, uh, we parked and we were going on a uh, one of those big paddle boat uh, rides. And so it took us a few hours. As we got back to the parking, I remembered that I had failed to pay for the parking on the mobile app. So I take off running toward the car, hoping I can get to my car before anybody finds out. And there's a parking attendant standing there and he is stone cold, all business. And I'm saying, hey, I'm here, I'm paying. He said, yes, you are paying. <laughs> and he's already got the boot on the, the tire. He's locked it on, so the car's not going anywhere. And I'm like, well, I'll pay you double. And he says, yeah, you will. It actually cost $120. It was so painful. And I, I learned a lesson that family reunions can be costly. It was a good time, but today on Mother's Day, we wanna talk about fa having a family reunion. As we, as we talk about family reunions, the thing is we're all part of a family. It doesn't matter what age you are or what stage you are. You can be 10, 32, 58, you can be 90. You're part of a family. If you're married, if you're single, you are part of a family and we all have a part to play and we're gonna find success when we begin to do it God's way. And today we are all together uh, online virtually or some of us even today are gathering together physically. But the thing is you can be in the same space and not necessarily be in the same place in your heart and your mind. And so the important thing is that we are together in our families, in our church family with one shared 
vision. So at the Connection Church, we have a shared purpose, and that is we connect with God, we connect with people, and we connect people with God. And we have a shared purpose in our family as well. And so as we think about that, I wonder why are moms so important anyway? It's Mother's Day. What's the big deal? Why are dads so important? Why is the supernatural structure of the family so important? Well, uh, as we look into God's word today, we're going to find out that if we don't understand what the family's supposed to be all about, we don't know what it is that we should do. So we're going to be looking in the Bible in Ephesians chapter 5 and 6 to find out the supernatural structure and the purpose of the family today. So we see this in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 31 and it says, as the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. So from the very beginning, it's been God's plan that the family is united into one. But from the very beginning until now, the enemy has launched an extreme effort to disconnect what God wants to connect and to divide what God wants to unite. That's right. We all were made for relationships. I was made for relationships. You were made for relationships. People were made for relationships. We need to be together. Um, We need connection. We need people to talk with and share with. We need people to lean on and to be able to confide in. And Mm. that's why when um, people are imprisoned, the, the worst form of punishment that they can get is to be in solitary confinement. Mm. That means that you are stripped away from all human Mm. contact. And uh, this just doesn't work for people Mm. uh, being disconnected. We need each each other. We need to be face to face. We need to be eye to eye. We need to be heart to heart. And our thoughts need to be moving in the same direction and our actions um, need to be unified. Um, We have been, uh, as you have, sheltering at home with our entire family. Hmm. Uh, We have two daughters, and most of the time we've been working hard to make sure that things are moving forward at the church. Hmm. Um, And then we have one of our daughters who is finishing up college uh, at home right now. And so we've been working hard, and and we have to stop ourselves sometimes about 8.30, 8 or 8.30 at night, and we have to say, okay, let's shut down down the work and let's try to relax and have some fun and connect with each other. So we'll start to say, uh, what about watching a movie or maybe we should play a game. And and so we'll go through the list of the movies and, and we'll try to figure out a game that we can all agree on. And the problem is we can rarely come to a <laughs> unified decision when it comes to this. And so sometimes we just say, oh, well, let's call it quits. Yeah, she usually wants to watch Top Chef, and I like to (laughs) prefer watching things where uh, people are punching each other. Maybe, you know, they have capes like a superhero, something like that. But today, we want to give you three reasons or three re-isms of three ways that your family can be reunited. And the first way is that we're going to reproduce God's pattern. This is the supernatural structure that God has set in place for the family and for our lives. And uh, we find this in Ephesians chapter 5 and 6. Now check this out. You're not going to find this in the psychology books out there. You're not going to find this in most parenting books because the world doesn't understand this. They're confused about it. So how could they let us know about this? But we have the Spirit of God. You have the Spirit of God in your life. And so you're really super smart. You're going to get this. Mm -hmm. And it's crystal clear here in God's Word as we look at Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. Check this out. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, 
so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. We begin to see the supernatural structure unfold here. And, and in first place, number one is God. See, God is first place, not your hobbies, not your phone, none of those things. And God needs to be first place in our families, in our homes, and in our lives. We put God in the place that he belongs in that first place. And then second is the marriage, the marriage that your relationship with your spouse then becomes second. And uh, as we think about that, you know, people, people ask, well, um, what's the best thing that you can do as a parent? And we say, have a strong marriage. They say, well, I'm talking about parenting and kids. Yes, have a strong marriage marriage. Love your spouse. See, our kids need to see that we have a strong relationship with each other. And so we put God first, and then we put our spouse before our kids, okay? And that is so important because, here's the reason, spouses stay and kids leave, all right? That's the, that's the plan. Spouses are going to stay. Kids, they grow up and they move out and so in that you know when kids are young they will pretty much do what we ask them to do what we tell them to do but as they start to grow up and mature then they start to do what we show them and what we've modeled to them so it's really important that we are modeling uh, strong relationships and a strong marriage and uh, it's interesting that during shelter at home, we've seen, they said two things are going up. The birth rate is going up or is going to go up. And they say the divorce rate is going up as well. And, and so we want to do something about that at the Connection Church. So what we're doing this coming Friday night on May 15th, we're having a match marriage night online that you can register for for free. And we've invited our good friends, Pastor Zach and Amber White from Revolution Church in Shirts. They're gonna be joining us along with their church family. We're gonna have a great time. So we encourage you to join us this Friday night to strengthen your marriage. So you've got God in first place, your marriage in second place, and then you've got the kids, okay? The kids, because they're not, you know, they're not above the marriage. Sometimes we wanna put the kids in the center of our home, but we need to have our, our marriage in the center of our homes. Um, you are not your kid's best friend. You are not your kid's buddy. You are your kid's parent. And so it takes courage to step up and lead. That's the supernatural structure. God first, marriage second, and then the kids third. And then the second re that we want to look at today is to reflect God's passion. Now we see this go on in Ephesians 5.25. It says, for husbands, this means Love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of the word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body. You see, God is a God of love. What incredible love God has. And Jesus loves the church so much that he laid down his life. He gave his life for the church. And so in our families, we want to reflect that love to each other, and uh, we wanna show that love by laying down our lives for each other. And how's that gonna work in our families? Well, first, we've gotta receive God's love. We receive God's love into our life so that then we can reflect God's love to those around us. You see, love is the fuel that makes the family go, it makes the whole thing go. And so in our families, we want to love in all directions. We love up, we love down, we love all around. That means spouse to spouse, parents to kids, and kids love their parents. It goes all of these ways. And what does love look like? Well, it's not always that soft, mushy kind of 
love. Sometimes love's got to be tough. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that means speaking the truth in love and saying some hard things. But we do that always out of love. It means always being willing to ask for forgiveness and always being willing to offer forgiveness. Every family needs massive doses of grace and forgiveness every single day. Yes, that's right. So the third re-ism that we want to talk about is realigning with God's purpose. Um, what we learn in a family is how to do relationships. We learn to develop godly character. We learn our family values that we live by our whole lives through. And so we want to make sure that we are realigning our families and our lives with God's purpose. So I want to give you um, some really practical, practical things that you can do, uh, three quick ways. So the first one is uh, be intentional about your family time. Hmm. Uh, you've got to plan it. You've got to make it count. Listen to what Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 says. It says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Now, you might say, well, that's talking about the church. Yes, that applies to the church, but that also applies to our family and our home time. We should be intentional about being together, setting aside that time to focus on each other's health and well-being and even having fun together. Um, listen to what Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7 says. I love this. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk on the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Those are moments that you're having at home together. Uh, we're doing a lot of walking in our house, taking mm. walks together. So take the time to invest in your family. Your family should be top priority uh, should be the one of the biggest priorities in your life. Um, we we have gotten that all wrong in the recent past and we've 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 put other things first. We've seen this play out as we've been sheltering at home. We have spent more time together uh, in our family unit. We have eaten more meals together. We have done more puzzles together. Um, we have read more books together and played more games together. And we've just simply been together more during this time. Um, so here's an example of what it looks like to put the big things first. Um, I have these two jars and uh, they have the same amount of contents. It doesn't look like it, but there are the same amount of rocks and there's the same amount of sand in both of these jars. <clears throat> this is what our life should look like. Uh, in this jar, I've put all the big things in first. I've put uh, these rocks that represent our family, our children, our jobs, uh, our church, okay? Those are some of the big things in our life. And, and I put those in the jar first, and then I filled it in with all the small things. And you see that it fits so nicely mm. in there. Uh, not only does it fit inside the jar, which represents our life, but there's extra space in there. We call that margin. Mm. That is breathing room. So yeah. that when the hard things in life hit, when the stressors hit, we still have space to deal with those things um, and, and we don't lose it. Uh, but this jar, this mm. jar has the same contents mm. as that jar, but look what happened. I started filling up this jar with all the small things and then putting in the big things on top uh, and, and not making those big things in life the priority. And look what happens. It's all spilling out over the top. Mm. And this is what our lives usually look like. Mm. There is no margin. There is no space left in there. And so we want to make sure that we are being intentional about the big things and investing in our family. The second thing that I want us to do is to pray for and with and over our families. Listen to James 5, 16. It says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Some of you are saying, well, I don't really know how to pray. Well, let's start slowly and easily. Let's start with the pray for 
heart. Uh, keep it simple. Say a quick prayer for your kids or your spouse and then text them or tell them, hey, I prayed for you mm. today. You can't imagine how that will increase their faith, how that will spur them on and make them feel good. And then when we get that pray for part down, let's move on to the pray with your family part. Now, this may start with mealtime or it may start at bedtime mm. or it may start about a family concern that you have in your family but just grab your family pull them together and pray with them and then once you've done that kind of prayer move to the pray over part praying over your family is so important praying over your children is so important i have fond memories of my daddy who would come into my room as a as I was a little girl and he would pray over me as mm. I went to sleep um, and I hold on to those things knowing that my dad was inviting me into his relationship mm. with God uh, and teaching me how to pray um, and and so that part in James 5 16 where it says the prayers of a righteous man or a woman is powerful and effective mm. that prayer has been powerful and effective in my life and then the last thing that I want us to focus on is teaching our children or teaching our family um, this little jar of beads <laughs> right here represents the time that you have in one week with your kids and your family. This one little bead out of this jar represents the amount of time that the church has with your family every week. Uh, you can see that, um, that the church doesn't have as much time as you have as a parent to invest in your child or your family. Um, and sometimes we want to leave the teaching and the training to the people that we call the experts, like the church or the school. But you are the experts. I want to encourage you. You are the experts with your children. And so we as the church, we want to come alongside yeah, you. Right. We want to resource you. We want to cheer you on. We want to help counsel you. Um, but we want to encourage you to teach your family and your children. It's so important right now. So when should all of this teaching and training, when does that start as parents with our kids? When should we start it? Well, <laughs> I think it starts from day one, the minute your kids are born. Well, that soon. That and, soon. And, and if you haven't started, the thing is, it's really not too late. You can start this today. That's right. And this week, we've had this incredible thing that happened uh, online. We did an online parent-child dedication commitment class where parents were committing to raise their kids in a Christian home to, to know Jesus, to follow after Jesus, and to partner with us at the Connection Church right. to make it all happen. It was an incredible moment. And I just want you to see just a, a moment of the commitment that they made right here. Check this out. Parents, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and as the leader of your family? Do you say yes? Yes. yes. Awesome. 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 So good. You know what? Parents, do you... Dedicate yourselves to love and to nurture your children, to teach them by what you say and by what you do, by teaching them and showing them, by disciplining them and encouraging them and celebrating them and leading them to know and to follow Jesus. If you do, say, we do. We do. Awesome. Awesome. Also, parents, do you commit yourselves to pray for your children and to partner with the Connection Church to provide for their spiritual growth with the same priority that you provide for their physical, emotional, and mental, intellectual growth? If you do, say, we do. We do. We do. Awesome. That is so moving. That's yes. so powerful. The thing is, you can get in on that. Like you can begin to make those commitments yes. today. It's not too late. A lot of people think uh, I've ar it's already too late for me. It's not. Today is your day. And I want to show you a up close and, and personal kind of picture that we find in Acts chapter 16 of a 
family that was reunited around the purpose of Jesus. Yeah. And, and as you look there, what's happening in Acts chapter 16, you've got Paul and his missionary partner, Silas, who were in prison. They were in jail. And so they were trying to keep it positive. They were praising the Lord. They were singing these songs. In fact, I think they were singing Jailhouse Rock. Mm -hmm. And as they're singing Jailhouse Rock, that's exactly what started to happen. The, the walls of the prison started to shake and the doors flew open. Well, when the jailer saw that the doors were open, he thought, well, all of my prisoners have escaped. So he wanted to take his own life. He was about to kill himself because his reputation and his job were on the line. <laughs> and so Paul says, hey there, slow your roll. We haven't gone anywhere. We're still here. And Paul began to tell him about how he, his life could be changed, how he could know Jesus. And Paul leads this jailer to Jesus. And his life at that moment was radically change but it didn't stop there because what this jailer did he went home and he led his whole family to know jesus and they were all baptized together because they'd all made that decision it was just such an amazing moment in fact what it says in acts 16 34 is that the jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them and he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. And what a beautiful picture of a family reunion. The whole family was in on it. And today, your whole family can get in on it too. The way you do it is you just begin to reproduce God's pattern and his supernatural structure in your family. You begin to reflect God's passion and then you realign with God's purpose and what that's going to lead to is it's going to lead to rejoicing mm -hmm. and it's going to be a powerful moment of restart I hope that in homes all over uh, our this area and even our country people today are saying on this special Mother's Day the greatest thing we can do is to begin to follow God's pattern and reunite our family. And you can do that today. And, and maybe for you, it's going to start by saying, I need to put Jesus first in my life. I need to ask him to have first place and I need him to be the leader and the forgiver of my life. Maybe that's you today. If that's you, I want to encourage you first. Let us know about your desire to make that decision. You can raise your hand uh, on tcclive.org. You, you click that button and say, today is my day. In the comments on Facebook or on YouTube, you say, today is my day. And we wanna come alongside of you. And right now what I wanna do is pray with you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, today we thank you, God, that you're moving in power. Thank you for your word that is true today. Thank you for the gift of family. Lord, thank you that we have our families and, and God help us to, to really put them in the right place in our lives, God, and put you in your rightful place in our family today. That is our commitment. But for some today, you would say, today is my day to give my heart and my life to Jesus. And if that's you, would you just pray a simple prayer with me right now? Pray, dear Lord Jesus, I need you in my heart and in my life. I ask that you would forgive me of my sin, that you would change me from the inside out and make me a part of your forever family. From now on, as best as I know how, by your Spirit's power, I want to follow after you. Thank you for saving me. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today online. I hope you have a great week, and I want to invite you to join us again next week as we start a brand new series called The New Normal. Yeah. I can't wait to see you then. Have a blessed week. Wow, what an amazing service. I am truly blessed. What we want you to do right now is head over to the Connection Church Facebook and Instagram pages. We are doing live from the lobby. That's a great place for you to interact with our team, get to know us a little bit better and ask us any questions you may have. That's right. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that follow button. That way you can stay connected with us all week long. We are going to be posting lots of resources and plenty of encouragement. 
Also, they are predicting that in this quarantine season, the number of births and divorce is supposed to go up. Yeah. We want to help our community navigate this season well. So we're partnering with Revolution Church for a match marriage night online. That's May 15th and registration is free. You can head over to our Facebook page and register there, or you can text the word match to the number 512-359-3400. That's right. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining with us. I want to invite you to stay connected all week long, and I cannot wait to see you soon. See you guys. Bye.